Hey guys, Brainiac256 here. I'm going to take you through the creation of a simple little electronic beat in LMMS from start to finish. Going to sound like Dead Mouse when we get finished with it. So right now we're just going to take out all the stuff that we don't need. The automation track, the sample track, and the controller rack, as well as this instrument that they've placed for us in the beat and baseline editor. Go over here to your sample set, and I'm just going to use samples that came by default with LMMS. You can drag over what you want, you can right click on it and say send to beat and baseline editor, or you can double click on a sample to automatically send it over there. Also, we need a snare drum. Would not be complete without a snare drum. Now the beat and baseline editor is essentially just a pattern editor. And you got your triggers here that you can trigger on and off using your left mouse button. There's a little four on the floor for you. So there's a nice little floor on the floor for you. I'm going to open all these up and put them on FX channel 1 so we can control the level independently from other instruments. And you do that just by clicking on the FX channel and dragging it up. And if we look down here at the FX mixer at the bottom, you'll see that each channel has a slider, a name, a value. You cannot change the value on the channels, but you can change the name. I will just name this one Beat. I'm going to go ahead and name this one Bass and Synth, because that's where those are going to go. And when I play this, you can see the beat level sliding up there. Now we're going to go ahead and program our triple oscillator as well. And this is just going to be a Reese bass style which is a style that is very prevalent in electronic music nowadays. And it just consists of a bunch of saw waves detuned. So we need to set the coarse detune so that they're all in the same octave, but we can set the fine detune out a little bit. And also your stereo phase detune and your phase offset controls to give it a little bit of that depth. And we're going to hit the little green tick box up here up to the upper octave A, which is just going to drop it into a lower octave for us. Now we also want to go ahead and program our pad synthesizer here, for which I'm using organic. And this basically consists of a set of overtones, or harmonic pitches, and you can set the waveforms, volumes, pan, and width levels there. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop this in channel 3, since this is going to be our synth pad. I'm going to name it pad. I'm going to set it to waveform number 1. Just go ahead and set all the oscillators there. I think waveform number 1 is a saw waveform, which will make it blend in well with our Reese bass. And... We can take the volumes and drop them down on the harmonics because we don't want all those harmonics cluttering up our fundamental. And then to give it a little bit of depth, just a little tweak on the wide knob will do it. And we set the distortion up to about... 0.5 or so, that'll do as well. And going to the volume envelope, we're just going to make it go ahead and hold the whole way through, have a release of about a fairly long release, a little bit of attack too, sort of give it a almost breathy sort of feel. And finally, we're just going to automate a notch filter 
to run over it. So go ahead and select notch and put the cutoff frequency around here, resonance around one, and go to, and make sure you're in the cutoff tab and go to LFO. Drag the amount up to 0.7 or so, and we're going to sync it up to the half note. So we've got a sort of undulating feel to it. Now, to add in the bass or the beat and bass line into the song, we just click where we want it to go with the left mouse button, hover over the border right here, and drag it out as far as we need it to go. And that'll cause it to pretty much repeat indefinitely for us. Let's go ahead and double click on the song editor where we want our bass line to come in. And it's going to be a fairly simple bass line. Oh. I need to... change my length right here. Make it bounce a little bit. And I'm just going to go back in here and change the envelope on the base because I forgot to really do that and we don't want it to just cut off at the end. We want it to, first of all, we're going to give it a little bit of punch. Punch is always good. And let the release go up to about 0.12. And we can edit the note volumes individually by clicking where we want the note volumes to be changed down at the bottom there. And we're going to just drag this through, and for the last one, select all, and drag it up to A. Actually, down to C. Yeah, that's a cheap, easy bass line right there. And you'll notice it looks indistinguishable from the other one because what you're viewing here is relative to so the pitch is contained within it. So we're just going to go ahead and to duplicate something on the song editor, you control click and drag it to where you want it to go. And then if you get it in the wrong place, you can just regular click and drag it where you want it to go. So we're going to duplicate this out to the end so we have it continuing throughout and we're going to go ahead into our pad here <clears throat> and we're going to do a little bit of chord inversion here with our pad so what we're going to do is we're going to do a D chord or a D minor chord I should say in open position and then we're going to drop it down to a B flat. Because why the heck not? Even though our bass note is playing D, D's in a B flat chord, it'll be fine. And so that's going to be what our chords are going to be D, B flat, G minor, D's in a G minor chord, B flat's in a G minor chord. And we can leave the F because sevenths are fun. So. I don't like that B flat as much. We'll let that be a C. And you can hear how it sort of sounds like an organ because you got all those harmonics playing with each other up there. So let's give that a listen.
All right, sounds pretty decent, doesn't it? Uh, we're still missing that sort of pumping sound that Dead Mouse does, and the way he does that is by using sidechain compression. And if you've already seen my other video, you know that sidechain compression is sort of tricky in LMMS, only because there's not a way to actually have a compressor that does side chaining because you can't connect an auxiliary signal anywhere. You can't duplicate, you know, signal paths or anything like that. It's not modular. Like if you were to go into ALSA modular synthesizer, you could easily do a side chain compressor. But we're gonna have to sort of do a makeshift side chain compressor. So what we want to do first is duplicate the bass drum track and pan it all the way to the right. And we want to take the volume up as well just ridiculously amplify it way beyond what we actually need to make sure that it hits the threshold and take it up to channel 3 because we want it to hit that compressor in the synth which we're going to add right now by the way so click on channel 3 and hit add effect and you'll be wanting to add the calf compressor. And if you don't have the calf plugin set, you can get it from calf.sourceforge.net. It's an awesome LAD SPA plugin set that goes beyond what the normal LSD, ah, LAD SPA plugins can actually do. I always want to set the threshold up, the ratio ridiculously up 10. 10's good. 10 will give us a. <laughs> Tin will duck it way the heck out of the way. All right, and set the attack all the way down. And we turned the stereo link on as well, which means that when the bass drum hits in the right channel, it's going to affect the pad in the left channel. And so we're actually going to turn the volume of this pad down because that was pretty excessive earlier. And now the last thing that we got to do is add in the stereophonic matrix effect. And what this will allow us to do is remove the bass drum from the signal and just keep the pad. So what we're going to do is take the right to right and put it all the way down to zero. And take the left to left and the left to right and put them about 0.8 each. That way we don't have the bass drum actually playing at all, but we still have it affecting the compressor. So let's hear what that sounds like. So there you go, you've just created a beat a la Dead Mouse in under 10 minutes with Linux Multimedia Studio. Any questions, just go ahead and leave them in the comments section, and I'll get back to you guys next time, alright? Peace out.